First and ten from midfield. Working quickly, the Boilermakers. This one's in and out of the hands, deflected in the carom to guess who? Mike Tyson, his third pick of the game. Stu Adam here, my co-host, as always. He's the man. He's the brand, Jay Thomas. What's going on, Stu? How you doing? Doing pretty good, man. How about you? I'm doing well, man. Good to be here, as always. As always, man. We have a special, special guest. Football player for the University of Cincinnati. Number five from Norfolk, Virginia. Mike Tyson. Oh, bite my ear. Sorry, Vander. Uh, <laughs> from ho- from hometown, uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, went to Lake Taylor High School and then went to Hargrave Military Academy. Now you see. So uh, coming out of 2013, that was my class, the best class ever. Most definitely. Best class ever. What was? Class 2013. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's my <laughs> class, too. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I know you, you, you were a hybrid position at the UC, uh, safety and linebacker. What made you even choose UC? I know you had offers from all different types of schools. You had Clemson, ECU, Texas Tech, um, TCU. What made you choose Cincinnati over the schools in the first place? Um, the reason why I chose UC over any of them schools because the players that was actually here. When I came here on my visit, they was real cool. Like, they just kept it real with me, just told me the ins and outs, and I just clicked with the players that was here. And you were tabbed as a four-star prospect by Scout. Uh, three-star prospect from Rivals and 24-7 Sports. So um, I know it's not, you know, all about the rankings and everything. So it was good to get your name out there. So did you go to any camps, uh, you know, to really to get your name out there? Like in basketball, I played. So I went to AAU tournaments, Mm -hmm. did showcases and everything, uh, you know, in that nature to get my name out there. So what did you do to really get showcased and showcase your talents coming from Virginia? To be honest, I didn't go to any camps. I went to one camp out of high school. Um, I played in some seven-on-seven seven tournaments. Mm-hmm. You know, we had, like, this little group called, um, can't even remember the name right now, to be honest with you, Thoroughbreds, actually. Uh, okay. Slipped my mind a little bit, Thoroughbreds. Um, we used to go to Maryland, stuff like that, play against talent all over the world. I remember we played against um, Stefan Diggs, you know, mm-hmm. when he was in high school, before he came out. Um, that's about it, really, to get my name out there. My school was kind of a bit school and in Virginia and in the 75 Hampton Road area. Hargrave? No, nah, Virginia. The high, uh, the high school? And, yeah, okay. Lake Teller, not Hargrave. Okay, so, um, you know, when you went to the military school, like, what was that like, like, just being at that type of school? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. was it, you know, sir, yes, sir? Like, was yes, it real, yes. like, strict? Real strict. It was, I mean. Did you I like mean, it? Like, did it get, did you think it really gave you discipline to, like, uh, you know, help you grow? I mean, when I went to there, I already had kind of discipline. I got that from home and parents. Mm -hmm. Uh, So when I went there, it really wasn't a shocker. I already knew what I would get myself into, so I kind of molded and already just made it through. Okay. That's what's up. And, um, you know, he bit my ear. For those who didn't see, we'll show that clip. Um, (laughs) Me and my uncle, uh, Evander Holyfield, we had to go through that traumatic event. But, you know, your name, uh, Iron Mike Tyson, you know, were you actually named from the boxer or, like, like where does your name come from? Is it a family legacy? It's uh, kind of a family legacy. Okay. My dad named Mike Tyson. His mm-hmm. dad named Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. My son named Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. You know, we, you. but we all got different middle names, though. So uh, it ain't no juniors, no thirds, mm-hmm. anything okay. like that. Yeah, so for mm-hmm. the ones out there watching, uh, he's a person you don't want to fight. Uh, he will <laughs> knock you out, and uh, he will do it on the field, and we'll show some highlights of that, too. So this season, uh, you had about... Uh, 46 tackles, five pass breakups, and five interceptions. You, you know, I've been watching you for a few years and got a chance to get to know you. So this year, you, you definitely had a breakout season. So, yes. you know, what were some things that you think that uh, allowed you to break out this year? That what were some things you worked on uh, the off season to just get to get you better? You know, your body and uh, learning different schemes and the coverages on the field and just learning to be a, a better leader. You know, so how do you think you got better over the years that you see? Um, it started in the spring. Uh, going to sleep early, eating right, uh, staying back, learning more, just learning the playbook more. And then they, then they uh, transfer over to the summer, mm-hmm. you know, then you going to camp, going there. But we go and get away from everything. We get away from the city, and we, we just bond together as brothers, and then we just get comfortable with each other. 
Right. To the point where you really just you brothers. So when you out there, you have nowhere. Everybody out there playing as one. Mm-hmm. So you out there, you really do your one eleven. You know, on your field, on your job, on the field, and they're just studying, asking coach, asking questions, mm-hmm. or being there for your brother because they know something you don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, right. so it just make you grow as a player. And just being a student, go ahead. So, so what do you think was the biggest adjustment? You know, from high school to Division One college football? What do you think was the biggest adjustment you had to make? Um, The playbook. Playbook. Yeah, the playbook is way mm-hmm. bigger. In high school, we just played one coverage, man mm-hmm. coverage. Here you got cover two, cover four, cover three, mm-hmm. you know, all the different blitzes. Right. And you just got to know your assignment. Mm-hmm. And then the speed of the game is totally different. Mm-hmm. I've heard that. That's what I, I hear that a lot, you know, with athletes. The speed of the game is always like the yeah, number totally one thing different. we always hear, the speed yeah. of the game. So Exactly. What was the defense y'all ran? We ran a 4-2-5. Four, 4-2-5. Two, five. Four, two, five. Mm-hmm. Did you pick that up pretty easily? Was that kind of difficult? Um, we've been running that since, since this coaching staff kind of came probably like one year in. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of sat behind a senior Leviticus Payne last year mm-hmm. and kind of he kind of taught me the um, position. <laughs> Payne. <laughs> Payne and Mike <laughs> he Tyson. He was a dog. <laughs> he was a dog. <laughs> yeah, he was. And uh, I know this season didn't go the way that we all thought uh, for an A season. But besides that, you know, you had a pretty good career, you see. So um, what did you get from this experience? You know, like in high school, I went to the Final Four and Stu mm-hmm. went to the Final Four. But mm-hmm. great thing about sports is it, it, it teaches you, you know, how to uh, take a loss and mm-hmm. how to win as a champion. So right. with this year, how did you learn from that? And what did you get from despite not, you know, not making a bowl game and mm-hmm. everything? What did you get from it? And uh, what would you say to the younger guys going forward? Uh, just know that your brother, your teammate, and your coach is the only one there for you. Mm-hmm. At the end, win, win or lose, you know, they they gonna be there through the thick and thin. Mm-hmm. Um, what I learned is probably dedication, hard work, because you got to go out there even though you're not winning. You still got to go out there and put forth your best foot. You know, you still got to play hard. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the biggest thing. It, it grew. I had to grow up as a player. You know, because I'm a sore loser, you know. Mm. Everybody, no, nobody like losing. All right, so all right. I'm a sore loser, so I had to, you know, adapt to losing. Not saying that's a good thing, but just trying to build the younger kids up because we had a lot of young players, so. Mm-hmm. And they don't know how to take that neither, so we just had to teach them and show them that being, like, like having attitude is just not the way to go. Exactly. Mm. Mm-hmm. You got anything, Stu? No, you go ahead. All right. I see you got the low life. Um, yeah. I got the lack of worries, you know. Lack of worries, low this, life. Got the state know. positive wristband. But uh, what does lack of worries mean? I've been seeing it uh, out there. I know what it means a little bit. But, mm-hmm. you know, for the lowly athletes, uh, what would you say that really means? Uh, um, you know, the ones that they're watching. Just low life. Like, you can you can make it no matter wherever you come from, mm-hmm. you know. No matter you come from the ghetto, you come from the suburbs, you can – Make it from anywhere. You just have to have that mindset to mm-hmm. make it. Um, it's just lack of worries. Mm-hmm. Anything is possible, you know. That's basically really what it means. Positive movement. Positive mm-hmm. movement. For uh-huh. the millennials, I love it. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to Low Life. Uh, be sure to check them out. Lifestyle brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's out of what, West Virginia who yeah. started it. Westbrook. Which so Westbrook. a lot of athletes are following it. Uh, lack of worries. So. You know, all the college students, finals are over with, so you can let it go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I already understand how that is. So, uh, I'm not sure. You, you know, going into college and everything growing up, uh, well, first of all, I know you're from Virginia, so were you a big uh, Virginia Tech fan, Michael Vick fan uh, back in the day? Who were some players that you looked up to in college and, like, you know, just as a kid, you know? Oh, uh, Cam Chancellor, uh, he came from out of the 7'5". Uh, D'Angelo Hall, he came from out of the 7'5". Percy Harvin, Michael Vick. I mean, we got a good list. What do you call it? Michael Vick. No, nah, what do you seven, seven, five. seven, five, seven. That's my oh, area code, you know. Yep, you from the DMV. DMV, so. yeah. Yep. Baltimore got some great crab cakes. This is random, but, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, I, I travel a lot. But the, I like the DMV. Uh, Virginia Beach mm-hmm. is Virginia nice. Beach, Remember that? I've been there. Virginia, Virginia Beach, yeah. <laughs> great. Remember the, the Nationals in Virginia Beach? Yeah, that was terrible. That wasn't a good experience. Oh, we, we, we played AU, and it, oh. wasn't, it wasn't some good experiences uh, with some 
some with some teams. We was on different here. teams though. Yeah, yeah, but we both, yeah, but we you know when you travel, yeah, 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 you, yeah. you got people that <laughs> you're dealing with different personalities yeah. and parents and everything. Oh, okay, okay. Gosh. And uh, you know how AAU parents can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it went we'll, down. We'll went go down. ahead and move on. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we but, talk about uh, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Vick really set that standard. You know, for yeah. people come out of Virginia and everything. So um, I know how big of a deal. That is. But mm-hmm. did you ever, like, consider going to Virginia Tech? No. Not really. You Not really. I always home. wanted to get away from, get out of Virginia. I mm-hmm. always knew it was more out there. Right. I um I believe that going different places, you learn different things because everybody have different techniques and way the way they teach things. So mm-hmm. that's what I believe. I always wanted to get out of Virginia. Mm-hmm. Okay. I understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely understandable, man. You know, it's it's – Environment is key, you know, yeah. learning from different people is always, you know, crucial with anything you try to do, yeah. you know, and if you get stuck in that box, you know, I know you always talk about getting out of Ohio, getting out of Cincinnati, because, you know, when, when you get stuck in a box, man, you know, you can become complacent. Yeah, you, and you, there's, you, there's a lot of people out there that can teach you different things, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. You know, you just got to get out there, look mm-hmm. for it. It's always, mm-hmm. it's never a lack of information. Yeah, you know, never, never. Just, knowledge is key. Knowledge yeah, is key. For mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Knowledge is key. Whatever you do. So, you know, the preparation part, you know, being a Division One athlete, that's something that almost every kid wants to be. You know, they yeah. want to play Division One, either basketball, football, whatever they're any trying to sport, do. Any, any sport. Any sport, you know. So what kind of preparation, you know, what kind of hard work did you have to put in? You know, in high school, even when you're younger, like what what was the preparation like to even get to this point? To be honest, the number one thing is you gotta have a mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, if you ain't got a mindset, just because you work hard, you you ain't gonna get there because it's tough. Mm-hmm. You know, so I feel like the mindset is the the main thing you need to have. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing I can say is just work hard, mm-hmm. work hard, listen, take in. Take in more knowledge. You never know too. Much. You never can know too much. Right. You know. So, just knowledge, uh, and work hard, and then have that mindset. They the three keys, and I feel like you can be successful. Mm-hmm. Makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. A lot of people are just lazy, man. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say they don't know how to do something, and you can look it up on the internet. Yeah. You exactly. know, so ask. That's all you gotta do is ask somebody. Exactly. I always say, you ask, see? not receive. Man. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's that's one of my mottos. And mm-hmm. speaking of knowledge, um, we were just talking about a little random, but um, you know, knowledge is great. But I always say this quote. You know, right? So knowledge. Mm-hmm. Itself is not power. The application of knowledge yeah. is power oh, because you gotta you gotta apply what you learn. You yeah. know, so you can know you know all the knowledge in the world. You know, you can read the books. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can go to business trainings. You can learn from athletes, but if you yeah. don't go out there and apply and it, apply yeah. it, it, it mm-hmm. won't matter. That's not worth nothing. You know, it's just yeah. like it ain't worth nothing. Basketball. Uh, one of my problems, you know, I was talented. I would put the shots in the gym and everything, but like sometimes when the game comes, yeah, that's, that'd be the thing though. When the lights come, and I'm like, oh, you freeze up, yeah, you freeze up. Yeah, you freeze up. <laughs> I'm, I'm not shooting yeah. it, and you know, I miss my opportunity. Yeah, so, you never know. You always got to, to, take, to me, take advantage of every opportunity you one get. Of the, one of the definitions of just being poor is that people that's just that just keep. Um, passing up opportunities repeatedly mm-hmm. you know so people just keep doing that and that's why we stay in that poor mindset because we had opportunities and it just went to the next person so that's just because people scared to step out the box yeah that's, all. that's what it is man it's, it's fear fear it's fear mm-hmm. you know and i mean that that's in everyone though yeah. i feel like fear is in everyone but unless you until you jump off the, jump off the porch i don't feel like you're gonna yeah. face it yeah you got to step fear on um, face first yeah you know so. Because if you think about it, Steph Curry, I think, you know, that's my favorite player in the NBA, right? But if you look at the you shots he takes, Steph Curry. Steph Curry. If, <laughs> if you look at the shots he takes, sometimes it's like, man, if he misses that, it looks bad. Yeah. But if he makes it, it looks good. Right? Yeah. So after a while, he's making me like, okay, we know he can make those. Yeah, because he practiced. Exactly. Practice. But you know what, though? I, I start wondering how many people in the NBA can shoot like him. You know what I mean? There's got to be somebody else in the NBA. No, I feel like there's a couple. You know, I feel like there's a couple, but the difference is, but the difference <laughs> is, first of all, if y'all seen his jump shot, it's the brokest thing. 
out. <laughs> Show a clip of that. No, nah, but uh, <laughs> no, nah, but <laughs> no, nah, but if you look at if you just look at, it, I'm sure there's someone else who can shoot like him, but they're probably because of fear they don't take those shots. Mm-hmm. You know, and just like how you were saying, a lot of us being practice embarrassed. being embarrassed. You know, because mm-hmm. everybody wants to make, but nobody wants to miss. Mm-hmm. But if, in order to make it, you got to be you willing got, to miss. Yeah, that you was know. one of my problems with yeah. my air ball. Yeah, you know, and then everybody <laughs> laughing at yeah. you, people looking. So, but here's the quote that mm-hmm. I was. Uh, when I forgot what it was. Poor passing over opportunities repeatedly. Mm. That's oh, what it stands P-O-R, for. P-O-R, yeah. Yeah. I didn't I forgot what it was, but there it is right look there. It up. Yep. So uh um, Yeah. So yeah. what about okay, back Go on ahead. fear though. Mm-hmm. Okay. How did you overcome it? Because you said like everybody, which I think is true, everybody has fear, but though you know, you gotta just jump, take that leap. So you know, one of my fears I know in football is missing a tackle mm-hmm. or getting scored on. Mm-hmm. I mean the first thing I had to do on working on my tackling was to go out there and tackle. You know, I can't go out there and have in my mind, like, oh, I can't miss this tackle. Right. I can't do this. I'm going to get in trouble. You mm-hmm. got to go take your shot. You know, right. you never know if you don't take a shot. Right. You know, just like I'm an aggressive football player. And like this year, we're playing Miami, Ohio. I got beat on a double move. Mm-hmm. I mean, the receiver, I mean, the player, he wasn't as good as me, but mm-hmm. I'm an aggressive player. I tried to make a play. You know, right. I tried to catch an interception. He hit me with a double move. Mm-hmm. scored on me. Right. And I just had to grow as a person and just – Grow as a person and just like swallow that and like yeah. coach is my bad. I pro- I got that. That's my fault. You right. know, I just try to make a play. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. you got to grow as a player. Yeah, and that's the thing though. You know, and I'm and you've made plays like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so but if you're oh, afraid, yeah. like oh, I'm gonna get beat. You'll never you go get, for it. You're going to get beat. You're going to get beat. Yeah. yeah. If you try, you're like, going to mess up. Being a defensive back, period. Being yeah. a defensive back, period. You don't have mm-hmm. to take chances. Right. You know? Uh, you're going to have to have short memory. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, you check in some of the best receivers in the world, in the nation, you know? Right. So you're going to have to just take chances to be yourself. Mm. You know? Exactly. That's, pretty, that's key. And uh, that's I key. had a couple more questions, whatever you got. Oh, no. I'm just feeding. I'm feeding uh, Jay. You got it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, to all the kids from the DMV area, from the VA, mm-hmm. um, you know, how can they get to where you got or, you know, just get to the next level, you know, coming from uh, Virginia? What can they do to get to the next level? Just believe. Have an open mind. Don't be scared to do something different, mm-hmm. which a whole lot of people from where I'm from is. They're scared to do something different. Mm-hmm. Just be different. Be yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of stuff out here that you can you can do. Mm-hmm. You know, you ain't just got to be an athlete. I mean, be be one of the top in your class in the, in the books. You know, get straight A's. You ain't got to always take sports out. Mm-hmm. It's just hard work. Yeah. Hard work on e- either end. That like was being dedicated to something. I used mm-hmm. to think as a kid, uh, I really thought that the only way mm-hmm. for me to make it was making it to the NBA. I thought that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, if I don't make it, my life is over. <laughs> see, the, see the thing, I see the thing that. with me? Same with me. School wasn't, you know, for I can't say for me, you know, but I didn't apply myself like I should have when I was younger in school. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of us. There's a lot of so I use football as like a stepping stone, you know. So I was like, oh, if I don't get a 2.0, I can't play football. Mm-hmm. You know, if I get in trouble out here in these streets, I can't play football. Mm-hmm. Football right. was just my stepping stone to get out of there, you know. Mm-hmm. Like my, I got a little brother. I mean, he in the books. He wanted to play sports when he came up here for a game, and I'm just like, no, nah, man, you smart. Like stay in the books. You ain't got to do this. Mm-hmm. It's what I had to do. Mm-hmm. You know what right. I'm saying? Everybody's different. Everybody's, everybody's different. different. Yeah. You know, that's something I've had to understand. Everybody's different path. You know, whether you're going to college, whether you're working mm-hmm. a job, whether mm-hmm. you're playing sports, whether you're artists. And that's certain things that some parents have to understand is like, just because you did something, you can't force your kids to do that because mm-hmm. we all have a different passion. And, mm-hmm. you know, everybody wasn't meant to be an entrepreneur. You know, everybody mm-hmm. wasn't meant to be an athlete. Everybody wasn't meant to go to college. Right. And, yes, I'm saying that. I'm not saying drop out of college. <laughs> right. I'm saying everybody has everybody, a different path. Yeah, right. Everybody has and a different once path. once you realize at a certain point in your life that who you are and, like, you know, what you're passionate about and everything, it's going to take mm-hmm. you so much farther. Yeah. And uh, dreams are worth more than opinions. Mm-hmm. So just always remember that. So, uh, you know, you talk about the books. Like, what did you major in the college? What were some things you studied? Criminal justice. I had Criminal a minor justice. in substance abuse counseling. I could see you doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I could do the counseling thing. So I could if, do it. like, football didn't work out or after football, would you see yourself doing that? Um, I'm going to use my connection. I, I got doing this football thing. Mm-hmm. To be honest, when I went to Denver last week, um, I kind of got sparked in the interest of, like, trying to be, like, an agent. 
mm-hmm. or something working with players coming out because there's a lot of players out here that be getting ripped off by agents and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I can help somebody just like me being a counselor. It's about mm-hmm. the same thing. You're still helping somebody. Right. right. You know. And that's a, a great way to mentor kids too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. For and sure. I, I thought about being an agent. Uh, that was a route I thought about. I just... I like education. I just, I'm yeah. not a big school person. Yeah. I didn't see myself going to law school. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, another quote, you know, formal education will help you make a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. Mm-hmm. So you got to self-educate yourself. Right? Man, mm-hmm. where you getting these quotes from? Hey, man, I've been yeah. reading. You got all the quotes. Reading all the quotes. <laughs> I've been reading. Wrong with yeah. the, uh, shout hey, out, man. To, shout out to Stu, uh, <laughs> because I'm serious. Stu is one of the people who kind of, uh, got me into reading and you know him, okay. and, him and my mentor and my sister because I never was trying to read mm-hmm. and um, it is a, a, a statistic they say a lot of people don't read a book after you know high school or after the graduate college yeah, you're, they don't. That. you're right they don't you know mm-hmm. because if you're not getting a grade for it, we're like, I'm not reading this. Yeah. All right. So but you only read wrong. something that interests you. Right. right. That's and the only thing you read. And that's the thing, though. In high school, they always gave us books that weren't interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So you, <laughs> reading was like, oh, no, nah, oh, I ain't reading nothing. Yeah. I ain't reading nothing. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when you start realizing, like, Steve Jobs wrote a book. Yeah. And he's the beast of what he did. You know, all these different people who may have passed away, they left their life knowledge in this one book. I'm like, man, mm-hmm. why wouldn't I read this? Yeah. You know what I mean? After a while, you start realizing, like, man, there's so much knowledge, information, so much wisdom, mm-hmm. you know, that that you can have just in a, in a book. Mm-hmm. And it's, what, $15? Yeah. You know, we'll pay $100, $200 for a pair of shoes yeah. that'll wear away, <laughs> but we won't, we won't get wild. a $15 book from Steve Jobs, who's a billionaire. You know, yeah, it's going to last you a lifetime. Like, it's going to last lifetime. you a lifetime. Exactly. You'll get a pair of shoes that lasts you a couple right. months, but, you, you know, but two you years from now. You can't get a book that lasts you a lifetime. I feel you. Like like yeah, so. But no, that's so. one thing I do need to start doing. I need to start reading more. I read stuff that interests me, you know, mm-hmm. and... I listen to a lot of older people, you know, so I get knowledge from them. Mm-hmm. But I do need to start reading more educational books, you know, right. if you want to put it in that say, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. Me, and, me and Stu soon to be one day authors. Yeah, for, work sure. Work. <laughs> for sure, uh, man. The millennial believer, the misunderstood millennial. So mm-hmm. we're going to be, you know, writing that uh, in the near future. So be, be on the lookout for that. Mm-hmm. But what are some fun facts about you? So. You know, I, I like to read. I like to travel. Different things. We all got different fun facts. And mm-hmm. uh, what would you say is yours? <laughs> like something, something we wouldn't even yeah. know. We'd be surprised. For real. Everybody got something. I like to cook. I can really cook. Oh, mm-hmm. really? I like, yes, Chef I can Tyson. cook. I can cook. I like to clean. I like smell good. Like, I like, okay. like a lot of hygiene stuff. Like, mm-hmm. so smell Dinner good Dinner at his stuff. place after the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, what's, your, what's one of your favorite things to cook? Like, what's your go-to my go-to meal, like your one meal that you would cook somebody if they uh chicken and shrimp alfredo. Mm. Yeah, with you, some with some what with some biscuits, mm. uh, some mashed potatoes, some corn. I'm coming over <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hey, I love alfredo. Man. I love shrimp alfredo. You know. <laughs> and uh, you know, Amazing. so everybody has a dream, and like, of course, one of your dreams would be to, to play professional football. Mm-hmm. So, um, what? Are the steps to get to that next level next? Are you going to be training anywhere? Um, um, are you going to Are you going to go to any uh, like combine places to train? Where are you going to train at? Um, as of right now, the book is kind of open where I'm going to train at. Like I'm considering Bomberitos down in on uh, North Miami, mm-hmm. you know, in Florida. Uh, but I got that's why I'm going to New York Friday to talk to my agent. That's you know, we going yeah, we going to sit down and we going to map everything out. Um and see where we go from there. But okay. train hope I train in Bomberito though. I well, want to train at Bomberito. That's the wishes to you, man. Prayerfully <laughs> that you do get drafted, signed, uh wherever. I I know that you'll be successful wherever you end up. Mm-hmm. But if a team does pick you up or draft you, what would you say to that program that they're getting from Mike Tyson? Um, you getting a hard working, dedicated and dedicated player mm-hmm. that would do anything for the team and as a team player. Mm-hmm. Awesome. We'll clap it up for Mike. Clap it yeah, up for yeah, Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah, clap it yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> In the building. You got anything else, too? Oh, yeah, for sure. I got a couple of things. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. You know, um, so something I always like to ask our guests, you know, 
Because, you know, when, you, when you're, you, especially an athlete, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. it's a lot of hard work and consistency. Consistency is key. Ooh, you just yes. can't work hard. You got to work hard yeah. and, and consistent. So, you, you know. Gotta, okay, um, yeah. Consistent. That's yeah. Cause that's, but that's what a lot of people's problem is. Whether you're an entrepreneur, a singer, whatever, an athlete. And once you get hard, they want to quit. They want to quit. quit. Exactly. Can't quit. So my you thing is, work through it. what keeps you from quitting? Like, what's your why? What's, what's that thing that you wake up every day like, okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again because it is. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Even when you're tired, you don't feel like doing it. You're like, I'm back at it. For the last three years since I've been here, actually been because of my son. I got a son. Mm-hmm. And I want to give him everything I I didn't have growing up. You know, right. I don't want him having no worries, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, stay hard on him. But still, I don't want him having no worries. And another way, I don't want to go back to where I came from, mm-hmm. you know. You know, I don't want to go back to that. Right. I just want to live a comfortable, good life. Right. You know, I don't want to have to live paycheck to paycheck, working mm-hmm. a nine to five every day, you mm-hmm. know, trying to provide for my kids, you know, struggling. I don't want to do that. Right. You know, I just want to have a nice life. Mm-hmm. See, that's healthy fear. A nice life. <laughs> yeah. There's an entrepreneur, Julio Acosta. He told his mom, uh, he was like, Mom, I don't want a good job. I want a good life. Mm. And some people may not understand what he's saying. Right. Well, well, ain't a good job a good life? Well, no. Mm, You know, you could be making a nice living at a job, but you hate what you do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I feel you on that. Yeah. Go ahead. But I like what you said about, you know, because that's healthy fear. You know, Mm -hmm. when you don't want to go back to where you were. You know, that's healthy fear. You know, that's mm-hmm. fear that can fuel you. Like, man, I ain't trying to go back to this. I'm afraid of going back. I'm afraid mm-hmm. of my son, you know, not having what he needs. I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. That's healthy fear. And that'll fuel you, mm-hmm. you know. So I thought that average. was interesting. Yeah, yeah average. average. I thought that's that was interesting. Yeah, fear, mm, mm-hmm. fear of being average. So. And I'm not saying that where I come from is a bad place, you know, because mm-hmm. you learn a lot. You right. know, you learn a lot. Mm-hmm. You learn a lot more. You learn more than sometimes from people that come from the suburbs, you know, because they don't have like they don't know how to clean they don't know how to fold clothes you feel right. me? they don't know how to yeah. do little right. things little like thing. that you mm. know that we learn from the discipline point of it you know right i mean but they do have just the better living and all that you know mm. but ain't ain't nothing that we mm. can't get you know yeah hmm. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Got anything else? One more thing. Yeah, one more thing. All right. So I always like to ask our guests this too. I think it's interesting. Um, just fill in this blank. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, you know, football career over, you know, what do you want people to say? Mike Tyson was a hard worker. Hmm. Hard worker. Nice person. You know, mm-hmm. dedicated to what he needed to do. Yeah. You know, tried his best. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. Mm. Amazing! Awesome! Awesome! Well, I'm gonna end it with mm-hmm. a, go ahead and end it with a with a quote. Another quote, man. Another quote. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I had tweeted Mr. this Colt. earlier, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna say this to the athletes, uh, to the go getters out there going into the new year. Um, just remember this. So not everyone who started with you is going to finish with you. Of course. All right. So remember that and uh, be willing to go without them if you have to. Mm-hmm. And this is Jay Thomas. Stu Animal with the great Mike Tyson. Mikey T.